Welcome to Naval Horizons. I'm Chelsea Holloway, an audiovisual specialist with NYWIC Atlantic, and I'm here with Dr. Francis Obusa. Can you please introduce yourself for us real quick? Yeah, my name is Dr. Francis Obusa. I, I, I am an epidemiologist and a public health educator with the Defense Center for Public Health at Postmate. I'm the lead uh, for this, uh, sexual health and reproductive health. And also, I also support critical uh, initiatives such as the COVID uh, uh, pandemic uh, emergency operating center, the MPOX uh, emergency operating center. And also, um, I'm also the EPIC consultant to the Navy Medicine Scientific Panel. You sound like a very busy man. So thank you so much for taking some time to chat with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Let's start off with, can you kind of describe your professional background and how you came to work for the Department of the Navy? Um, my professional background, I, I believe my journey into the public health uh, began in Africa. Um, I'm a native of Nigeria. I'm, a, I'm an Nigerian American. Uh, but growing up as a child, um, in my environment, it was endemic with uh, various uh, diseases such as malaria, uh, typhoid, mm -hmm. Meningitis, and as a child, I saw many of the kids who have kwashiorkor marasmus, bucket lymphoma, and even as a kid, my dad, even growing up, would make me to read post medical med digest, oh, talk wow. about scenarios in medicine, and those things kind of uh, uh, ignited an empathy in me to pursue uh, a career in public health. So that was how I started. I, with that, I went into human nutrition as an undergraduate course and later pursued a, a post, I mean, master's in human nutrition with a focus on public health and just to have a better understanding of what was going on and how I can actually make a change in my community. Later, when I immigrated uh, to, to the US, I pursued an MPH in uh, epidemiology and international health. And later to have a deep, a deep dive into the area of the health needs, uh, how disease spread, the origin of disease. I later did my uh, doctorate in uh, public health with emphasis on uh, HIV and also in maternal and child health epidemiology. So it was a lot of personal experiences that encouraged you to kind of pursue this path. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's exciting. And um, you came to America. You got your doctorate and your master's as well from University of uh, Alabama, right? Yeah, in Birmingham. Yes. Yeah. That's great, that's great. And how did you end up with the Navy? Um, my journey to the, uh, the Navy was actually uh, fueled by my commitment wanting to actually help uh, with the health needs of our military personnel. Um, initially, I was an, uh, I'm a veteran, Air Force veteran, so my career pathway, once I, when, when I finished my uh, doctorate, actually led me into the Air Force, where I worked uh, in many of the operations. I, I led many of the uh, outbreak response, uh, such as Ebola in Liberia. I also other critical initiative in Africa. So after that, I was in the Air Force for about 10 years. But, but the, uh, when I left, I transitioned to the Navy because I still felt the aspects of the EPI we talked about, the public health, uh, is greatly important in military operation. I, I, I wanted to contribute. That was the reason I came into the Navy. Well, great. We're, we're happy to have you in the Navy. So that's that's a good thing. <laughs> so what are Thanks. you currently working on? What's your s and topic? My s and topic is epidemiology. Um, epidemiology is the foundation of public health, as we say. And one thing is that is the, is the study of distribution and determinant of diseases and, and also, it also talks about the knowledge of how to prevent and control that particular disease in a population. And so how is that going to kind of help with naval challenges? How are you working to solve and help naval challenges? I mean, it's all about keeping military strong and I'm also I'm having a successful mission and keeping our forces healthy. When you look at the field of public health, it's... Uh, it can be we can we can talk uh, we can talk about it in different in different aspects we can talk about it in our operational readiness and force protection we can talk about it in infectious disease surveillance and control also we can even talk about the effect of epidemiology and public health in humanitarian assistance and disaster response such as what we saw in the covid or the mpox um, uh, outbreak or pandemic so we can talk about the ep in global health diplomacy and security and even right now, talking about anticipating 
uh, feature tribes, talking about imagine and reimagine infectious diseases around the world. So this right. helps us to actually help to build a wall around our forces, our soldier, I mean, uh, uh, sailors and marines, so that we can they can actually go and achieve uh, uh, move on with their mission uh, wherever they are. Can you expand a little bit on how that's going to kind of advance us in the future? I mean, looking to the future, we can see the right now. Um, one thing, the beautiful things happening right now, as we can see, the big data analytics. If, I mean, the, if, uh, we can see the AI, artificial intelligence coming up into the space. Uh, we can see that more of the predictive, a uh, big um, machine learning, as we can see, all these are new things coming into into the space right now, and this can make us able to analyze bigger numbers of data. Uh, we can have what we call a more accurate prediction. And once we can have accurate prediction of what uh, can happen in the future, we can begin to actually develop control measures, preventive measures to prevent those things from happening. I mean, if you know, talking, to, talking about our uh, Navy and the Marine, even when they stay, stay in, the, in the ship, there's a close, close quarters. Yeah. And being able to understand how the disease can flow in that particular space. Uh, using the data analytics, using AI, uh, AI and others, uh, uh, machine learning, we can able to understand the flow of things and able to put control measures into that particular space. Even those on the on the, on the base of those who are deployed, our footprints are all over the world. And understanding what is happening in different parts of the world, and being able to put measures in place before our, fo our forces can actually get there, understanding what's out yeah. there and how we can protect them from those from those infections. That's fascinating. I wouldn't have thought to connect how you would use AI and machine learning to help with your predictions for, you know, public health and diseases and such. Which, but it makes sense when you say that, like you're going to use AI for everything. And you kind of mentioned how on a naval ship, you're in close quarters and you're going to try and use data to analyze, you know, how diseases spread and put in like measures to help control that. Can you give me like a specific example, like a hypothetical, what you would do if you got some type of data? And the decision you would make, just so we can kind of picture what that would look like. I mean, currently, I think one of the projects I'm working on on, on sexual health is developing an app with the uh, issues at this particular point in time. So the one one thing we could trying to do is that if our forces are deployed, they can have information based on that, which is can be offline based on the new technology. So we don't have to wait for them to come back to get information. The app can talk about sexual health needs, ask for them to prevent uh, others uh, uh, getting infected uh, uh, along the way. They can have access to information at every point in time. They can have the privacy of those, I mean, of, 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 of reading those sort of things, of being able to ask questions, also being able to understand how to ask questions with their providers and how to understand the risk in every location. The app, the way it was, has been developed you, once you get to any location, it tells you about the risk in this location and how to avoid those risks in this location. So that's the beauty of technology we have uh, to, uh, today. Great. So in a sense, this could really have an impact on society outside of naval uses. But oh, would def you... Definitely. Yeah. And not just in that app, but what are some other ways that your research and what you're working on could help impact society? Outside of the app, we have I mean, we are talking about, I mean, predictive modeling, um, which is uh, something we do in public, uh, in HEPI and public health. So they have, we have, even in, in, in the department health analysis, they have uh, big machine learning, uh, which they're trying to use to actually model big data and be able to do more, have more accurate uh, predict, prediction of uh, infections coming into a, that will affect our process. Um, so you're collecting a lot of data to come up with some of these predictions. What is some of the data that you're collecting to help create these um, predictions and these measures to help protect people? So, I mean, we collect everything that can actually affect uh, humans I mean, in many ways. Um, I mean, we have personal data we collect. Uh, we have uh, environmental data we collect. We have... Uh, um, what they eat, what they do, we look at all everything that can, that can easily affect, and we use the data to predict and to sh show uh, to show what will affect our, um, our forces in any particular area. So, like I mentioned in the beginning, that uh, when we look at force health protection, it talks about anything that will affect our forces. I mean, but in I mean, in what they eat, what they do, what they drink, 
where they sleep, uh, how they behave. So those kind of things are all the things that could be collected that could affect operational readiness. Uh, we talk about in, uh, infectious disease surveillance. So, I mean, we're trying to see how things, even entomology, every, anything that will affect uh, people, I mean, where, wherever they are. So that could be right. one of those things that uh, was being collected. So that was, uh, yeah, that's some of the- There's a lot, there's a lot. And it paints but, this picture that you're able to kind of break down and create all these ways to help protect not only the naval, um, our naval force, but eventually society. It's, these are tools that society can use to protect themselves. So it's it's fascinating what you're working on and it's it's very exciting. How and why might a high school or college student be interested in this? You know, uh, the, the, the good thing about uh, about the high school student because they are, they are very, I mean, I was at one of the uh, events on the STEM, STEM program you guys have. They are very, very curious and they want to know, and they are actually developing stuff, right? I mean, so one of the things about being an epidemiologist is like being a health detective, trying to understand how disease operates, how, uh, what causes, how, did it, how the distribution of disease among our population, what determines who gets a particular disease and, and, what, and, and someone else do not get it. So in that particular space, they could, I mean, they could function in terms of trying to uh, develop those apps we talked about, Understanding the AI model, understanding how they can influence those changes in behavioral changes in the future. So that's what one of the things they could bring to the space. I love how you described it as a health detective. That's it, it, that's so true. Like you're really trying to find the culprit, the answers, the prevention. That's that's and you're using a lot of different ways to do it, including AI now, which is that's the future, that's exciting. We've got a lot of tools ahead of us. So what advice would you give to high school, college students who may wanna pursue a, a career like this? So, I, I mean, I would like them to know that science is just not about lab and, and experiment, it's about making the real impacts on people's lives. Yeah. So that's what the epidemiology isn't just about numbers and data, it's about keeping our military strong, our mission successful and our forces healthy. So every piece of the puzzle matters and everyone who is passionate about the science can make a difference. So one thing I always said, I mean, is healthy forces mean efficient operation. And then something, so one of that's one of that's the beauty of FP and public health. That's we, 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 we try to build a wall around the forces so they don't get any infection. Uh, we try to understand where they're going to, so we can actually provide a safe environment for them. And also not just where they go, so we don't want them to bring anything back into the country or into their family. So that wall is always right. constant all the time that we want to make sure that uh, they are being protected health-wise so they can focus on the mission. If we focus on the healthy, uh, on the what could affect them health-wise, they can focus on the mission. And what we do basically is to find those factors that we can uh, take to our medical team, team and then they can build a complete package of prevention and control for them. And I'm, I'm just curious on a personal level, you know, going into a field like this is, is going to be hard. So anyone pursuing some type of science, technology, engineering, and math, just in general, what advice do you have, you know, to kind of pursue, get through the education that you need to be successful in this career? Just what helped you along the way? The beauty about epidemiology or public health is that everybody has a space in it. If an engineer, if you're basic medical sciences, even if you're a lawyer, if you're uh, an educator, if you, no, no matter your profession, there's a space for you in public health. Yeah, I'm also ask. looking for like any type of like how to persevere hard times of trying to get through like studying or getting into schools. Maybe they're not getting the schools they want to go through. Just in general, like how on a personal level do you kind of push through to keep going and make it through any type of hardships when it comes to your education? I mean, everything, I mean, there's nothing easy. I mean, most, mostly, but the one of the fun parts of the, of the study is that it's a, it's a lot about, play, I mean, having a puzzle, I, I mean, solving a puzzle in that particular space. So it's, it's a fun program. Um, I, I tell people that my Xbox is, uh, is epidemiology because I'm every day, I'm doing what I like by trying to solve a puzzle of a particular disease. And yeah. so that's one of the fun part of it. I mean. First of all, having your uh, undergraduate studies, in, you can have it uh, in public health. You can go to uh, and have your master's in, in AP or any other uh, career area you like under, under, the, under public health. You have um, yeah, 
health behavior, you have maternal and child health, you have different aspects you can follow in that particular space. So there's a lot of uh, opportunity for the young ones coming in. Wonderful. Okay, well, thank you so much for speaking with us. We learned a lot. And yeah, I'm excited to see what the future of public health holds. It, it sounds... Yeah. yeah, it's kind of exciting. I'm looking forward to this uh, to this new era where we have this, uh, all this uh, AI, yeah. machine learning, and all this uh, big data analytics. So that's going to make uh, the environment very interesting. That's going to be very helpful for us to do a better job uh, with our jobs. So doctor, can you think of an experience you had or a time when you were out in the field or you were doing your job working where it kind of hit home and you were like, this is why I do this. This is why I love doing what I do every day. You know, um, growing up, my, my dad used to tell me that uh, when your neighbor house is on fire, you have the moral uh, uh, to be able to actually help to prevent the fire from spreading, if not it's gonna spread to you. And that's I can actually stayed with me over the years that we have a responsibility to take care of our neighbors, and that's what public health is all about. So, and um, growing up, there's a particular I mean quote I can't remember who said it. Maybe it was uh, Mary and uh, Rad Matcher. I can't remember. He said courage doesn't always roar. Uh, so sometimes courage is that little voice at the end of the day that said I would try. I would like to do this again tomorrow. So one of the one of the areas that actually speaks to me is the during the Ebola crisis in Liberia. Uh, I was the first medic in the Air Force that actually stepped around on Ebola to, to open doors for uh, all the forces to come in. And being there to see what was happening, uh, people dying on the street, people dying at home because there was no treatment, and what, and we'd be able to come in as a U.S. Uh, uh, forces to be able to help in that particular situation. Uh, to actually help in that global health diplomacy and security to help with disaster response was something that actually stays stays with me all the time that we're able to contribute it was a privilege uh, and honor to be able to be part of the of the team but being able to contribute into that particular environment uh, speaks volume to what we do as u.s forces we do not always help even just at home but we have globally we have everywhere our footprints are everywhere to make sure the world is safe not just America is safe, that the world is safe. So the, the experience with Ebola and during that particular uh, moment, tr trying to define what is best for the people, to find where the feed hospital was gonna be. I mean, one of the things we do as uh, epidemiologists and public health is being able to, to actually build a BI base in the health model that will not lead to infection. That's why we are very critical, even though you have engineers, we will tell them this is the best place to build it because of it, or a particular disease outbreak might, might occur in wow. the area. And this is where the wind is blowing. So you don't want to put your latrine in a particular way. It's not just to build it, have the building, it's to think about the health impacts of how this can affect the lives of the people uh, who are wow. actually in that particular space. So during the Ebola crisis, that was what we did with the feed hospital that actually helped all the healthcare providers who came into Liberia in that particular at that particular time to help res resolve the issue. So that's one of the things that actually stays with me that we have the opportunity to help and save the world. Wow, that was wonderful. I think that's some advice that no matter what you do in life, we can take that with us. Absolutely. Thank you so much again for speaking with us. You've really kind of opened our eyes to what epi epidemiology is and what public health does and how it helps the Navy and the world, as you said and how we should be kind of helping our neighbor just in general. Thank, so, thank you for that. Was wonderful. Yeah. Yes. So thank you again. This is Chelsea Holloway and Dr. Francis Obusa. And uh, we had a great time chatting today. Thank you.